in today's video, I'm running you through everything you need to know to fully wrap your head around the Orcs in 10th edition 40k. This guide's going to be running you through things like um, weaknesses, strengths, army building tactics, how the Orcs fill the shoes of the normal standard army building list kind of regime and roles, and even give you a full deployment guide on how to properly set up your orcs on the table so you don't really have to make up ideas on how to actually move them up the board but you have a step-by-step one-to-one guide on how to do it so without further ado let's not waste any more time and just jump straight into it with a full orky guide for everything you need to know to master orcs in 10. now first of all i'm going to start off with the strengths what makes orcs so good what is the kind of core positives of orcs that brings them into the light and actually gives them a decently high win rate in the current meta. Well, the very first one's going to be their high pressure melee focus based detachment. Orcs really seep into the idea of melee and the detachment for this edition has really helped them become, you know, kind of a very straightforward army in terms of what you're playing for. The army wide rule that extends from one to all melee weapons in the army really kind of sews in the idea, like I said, of being melee and grants them better melee in the process, which helps them kind of solely zone into one area and just kind of master the whole idea of being a very decently good melee army. Next one's going to be high OC on cheap infantry, meaning things like boys, Gretchens, and um, other kind of smaller infantry units inside of Orcs are going to be quite cheap, meaning you can really hold down points well when playing these guys. For example, me running a Zogrog, Wartsnagger, 22 Gretchen combo allows me to hold down and secure a point very easily because of like almost 40 OC I'm getting from the Gretchen. So coming from like um um high OC background in terms of all orcs, I think that they generally supply a very large amount of OC in not just in infantry but also a large aspect, but mainly infantry is where they shine in terms of bringing a lot of units with high OC count like boys and Gretchen and knobs and mega knobs who stand for they only have one OC of course. Next one's gonna be a nice anti monster vehicle which really helps the current um tank-ish meta. Having this anti-tank ability on things like um, Mozrog, on the Beast Snagger boys, on the Squig Hog boys, on um, just like large hard-hitting monster anti-vehicle monster units, mainly kind of going to the Beast Snagger approach, but the point is this helps counter the meta, the current meta of like anti-tanks, so things like your Rhinos, um, your Dreadnoughts, your uh, like big chunky units that they're going to be taking in, you've got a great counter tank, you've got a great defense to knights, a great defense to tyranids, a great defense to like hard hitting, like monster mash, vehicle mash lists, which is like a large um, part of the meta, and which encompasses like those really large annoying units you just can't get rid of. Orcs have a fantastic counter to them with the high anti vehicle monster like four up or five up, which is fantastic. Um, and the last one's gonna be tough. They are surprisingly tough. The common orc boy has a T5 toughness, going only up from there. Regular truck being only 65 points of a T10, tough or T8 toughness, Mosrock having T10 toughness. Um, just pretty much regular infantry units having above T5. Most regular infantry units are coming in at T4, maybe even T3. But these guys are excelling, being T5, T6, T7 <coughs> for your regular Squig Hog Boys, um, Flash Kids, things like that. They're all T5 up. Meaning you're going to be looking at some like pretty nice, better ways of carrying them in terms of having strength in the field of, well, not having to die straight away because you're only T4. But that's all the strength. That's what wraps up Orcs. Honestly, good strengths to have, but what are the weaknesses that bring down the Orcs in terms? Now, what's not good? First of all, it's going to be their deployment threat. You see, the, when you're deploying going against Orcs, you pretty much have no strong shooting. The Orc shooting phase threat, which is the second point as well, kind of really sucks. It's hard to find solid orc units besides a couple, which I'm gonna talk about in the few in the um the I'm gonna talk about in the rest of the video, that really shine in terms of orc strengths. So when enemies are deploying, they don't really have to worry about any long range threats because the only long range threat we have is mech guns or the stomper. But both those options are the stomper option is bad and the mech guns are mm, quite a controversial topic. So it's hard to find a list of orcs that really counters the deployment and allows the enemy to kind of put in it, put units where they wouldn't usually and gives them more openings to go to points or score more second points, which can be annoying and a little bit hard to deal with, especially when we only really have strength in melee. Um, going past the shooting phase threat, because obviously orcs really lack shooting in terms of like solid shooting units besides things like flash kits and sometimes mech guns, 
Um, lack of power in vehicles as well. We only really shine in infantry-based combat and kind of specific character-based combat. So if you look at most orc armies, they're going to consist of large infantry-based things. So large squadron of beast hanger boys, large squadron of knobs, large squadron of boys, um, nice throwaway units like Gretchen's, um, mega knobs, and then characters consist of like Mosrog and um, Gazgo and things like that. We honestly don't really have a lot of vehicle mash. Um, barely any, like pretty much no monster besides like the squid goth and um, um, squigasaur. Um, sorry, um, go get to a squigath and and like things like killer cans and death just really don't shine right now in the current attachment. I'm sure when we get the codex and we start to get like the stomach patrol and like monster mash maybe and a bit of a beach slayer. We'll start to see some of the more vehicles and the monsters coming in and some of like the more you know some of the more like unused models like the buggies and. You know, just some other units we might not see. You know, nice to see that. But honestly, right now, attachment, it's hard to take vehicles without losing points. Uh, next one's going to be predictable playstyle. When you run orcs, you know what they're going to be like. They're either going to be charging up with vehicles, with trucks, sorry, with just like transports, or they're going to be walking up support. They're going to want to get into like combat, and I'm not going to be very good at stopping you from getting up besides a melee threat range. So, people can kind of work around that and find cool ways to destroy this orcs. Um, like courage, kind of in terms of the playstyle, and they can make workarounds uh, very easily even before the game begins. So you're gonna be careful that people know how orcs play, because it's kind of like Necrons, where you, it's pretty much one thing you're doing: you're charging up the wall as fast as possible to get your wall off. So, a bit annoying, but hey, it's gonna happen. And the last one's gonna be AP brownie face. We suck at AP. The average AP of orcs is like AP two, and only ones are getting AP three and four is like obsessions like um big mechs. Uh, big um, big shock attack gun, uh, mech guns, gas goal, mega knobs, and like some individual hard hitting units like the squid goth and the uh, um, gargantuous squid goth that really are hard to take or are annoying to take. So, um, Captain Badrock also has AP minus three, but the point is, is that AP is hard to come by above two, which is why we have to prioritize as much AP minus two as possible in the orc list. But that's the weaknesses. A little bit annoying, but we can work around them. So now I'm going to explain to you how exactly orcs work overall so you can implement these strength and weaknesses to get a very good picture of how they operate. So basically you know what orcs actually do in the game. Now, orcs' main way of playing. This is how we're going. We need to set up an amazing pre-war turn. So a turn before we do the war turn, which is our main ability, which gives us a bunch of buffs, including a 5 vulnerable save, plus 1 in strength and attack, and allows us to advance and charge, which is originally a very melee-centricated go-to. So, that we get the most out of this ability. This requires fast movement of hard-hitting swarms of orc men. If you follow this to a T, I promise you, you'll have an amazing, fantastic time playing orcs, because this is what's going to guarantee you a good win, and allow you to keep them on the board. Now, orcs love large, sl la large squads of elite models. Knobs, flash kits, mega knobs, um... Beach Sanger Boys to an extent, and even a large squad of boys, like 20, because it's what sets up our go turn really well. You see, we want as many swarms of hard hitting units as possible. That's why knobs excel so well in this current attachment, because it's what we want. We want as many sustained hits going through as possible with our army line rule. So, having these large squads of hard hitting orc models really gets, um, really gets the benefits going and allows us to make the most out of the war and get like a lot of damage off. Instead of having like certain like one unit who are moving up slowly. We have a large squad of elite units who hit really hard. We can do a lot with the war. Next one's going to be getting fast movement. You see, the war is useless without fast movement because you want to get the war off as soon as possible because the quicker you are, the quicker you kill a bunch of stuff. And the quicker you kill a bunch of stuff, the less the enemy has to score, and the less they have to score is the more points they score for you. So getting a war off battle round one, uh, sorry, battle round two, maybe three and four, Four to like a super super large extent is what you want to go for. So things like trucks, battle wagons, Mosrog, squid hogs, these fast moving units are going to either carry the transport often for carrying things like knobs and beast hanger boys or Mosrog and squid hog boys and beast ba beast boss and squigasaur and like um fast moving maybe death dealer war trike. Those things work really well because it what sets up the go turn really well. It's like the pre orc war war phase. It's what gets everything into position really well, so that when the enemy moves up, you can just war in their face as soon as possible and get so much damage off. So, prioritizing faster movement, like trucks and battle wagons, should be a priority in your list. Orcs love transport more than any other army in the game. 
like somewhat wide PE, similar to the way that most military armies do, because you want to get the models up as fast as possible. So, prioritizing trucks, battle wagons, and these fast moving melee damage dealers can be awesome for helping you get the um, setup to the wild zone. So, when the wild does come, you don't have to worry about moving 12 inches or getting like a 9 inch charge, you just know you're ready to go. And taking advantage of our gold quality throwaway units can be awesome. When you have these units like these Gretchen's trucks, spare trucks from like the uh, from the movement phase and Storm Boys, you don't have to worry about positioning your other units in a way that needs to score. You just have this straight up high quality scoring unit that can push forward and just basically be a lad. They can just do what they want and they can just score and be thrown away. So you don't have to force your um, main kind of attacking units like Beast Mega Boys and Knobs to do the work for you. You can just get these side units to do it for them. And with them being a really good quality, like Gretchen's having a 2OC, um, what, trucks being like already a good fast moving unit, and Stormboys being deep striking, war bikers being an amazing 12 inch movement, you have gold standard throwaway units, so you don't have to worry about really thinking so innately about it. You don't have things like Nerglings and Crew Hounds who have like 0 OC and are hard to deal with. You've got these efficient throwaway units, these gold standard throwaway units, you can actually don't really have to think about much and just put them where you need. So, Taking advantage of them, having like two squads of Gretchens, two squad, squads of Storm Boys, one squad of War Bikers, or a combination of some of those can work highly well in being effective to kind of positioning you in a way that allows you to not need to worry about putting your hard hitting units in terms of doing stuff. But that's going to be the main way of all the play. That's going to be how all are going to play, how they're going to kind of work into the game. Hard hitting, fast moving units set up the go turn for the wild. So, how do Orcs exactly fill out the boots of the roles that we see in most um, usual uh, 40k lists? Now, who fits the shoes for Orcs? The standard, you know, kind of spots to fill you need in a game and an army of 40k to achieve greatness, basically. So, how and what are the best units that fill the average roles in 40k universe that basically make up a good list? Now, the tank. Who is going to be the tanks? Who's absorbing all the damage and stopping you from kind of destroying your killer units and stopping you from basically destroying your entire plan overall? So, first one's going to be Mozrog or Beast Blossoms with the CV. Models are basically the same thing. They come in the same kit, but they offer different things. One is meant more for a Beast Snagger kind of approach list, and one's meant for more just kind of like to be in your list. Obviously, you don't need to have a, a Beast, Snagger, Beast Snagger themed list to take Beast Blossoms with the but it can be good to have a couple of beast models in there because he obviously gives the um, beast snagger models a reroll for charging. Now, they come with a fork for no pain, along with T10 toughness, uh, Mozrak having a four vulnerable save, beast boss having five. Awesome. Amazing tanks allow you to absorb damage, <coughs> have kind of focus fire on these guys, and save your units so much time. You can spare your trucks, your battle wagons, your squeak boys from getting shot so much. Um, next one's going to be Mega Knobs. They are really good because having a solid brick of these guys, five or six mans, can be awesome. With a two up save and T6 toughness, having five or six of them, like I said, can't be bad because when you put them, especially even with um, uh, big mech uh, in mega armor, it gives them ability to resurrect um, mega non models and gives, a, gives them a nice and vulnerable save. So these guys can work very well at being a nice tanky unit a force fire unit, and if they do go through and the enemy just wipe them completely, they have a dev wound in the wire phase. So, nice unit, you can alternate between both, but ultimately, a good solid unit if you're willing to invest the points, and a lot of points at that. So, those are the tanky roles. Mozrog, Beast Boss, and kind of Mega Knobs are going to fill those roles in your main competitive orc list. But who are the killers? Who are the main damage dealers who are going to really give the war a true um, tie to its name? So, first one's going to be War Boss and Knobs. Now, Warboss and Knobs with Power Claws have incredible damage. These guys are awesome. Now, you have to do Power Claws. <coughs> um, regular choppers do work, sure, but Power Claws is what's going to get you to the max. It's going to really separate you from like, just regular damage dealers and give you amazing damage. It's got AP minus 2, damage 2, strength 9, hitting on th 3 attacks, and hitting on 4s, but using 3s because of Warboss, which is really, really good. And ultimately, he's going to be your main threat in the warp, as they just are crazy and do so much damage. Next one's going to be Knob on Smash Squeak with Squeak of Boys. These guys are fantastic anti-tank models and a really good fast infantry that do not need transport. Take, obviously, you can't take them in the transport anyway, but having that, like, I think it's like 
T10 or T12 movement is awesome. As you get up the fast board, set up a nice go turn for these guys who the um knob one smash flick gets a three up invulnerable three up uh anti vehicle anti monster in the war phase. So setting these guys up for a nice war phase is awesome. Out taking down those hard hitting kind of transport or vehicle monster based units that it's really good. These guys are awesome for anti tank and are just a nice you know good infantry to have. Well not infantry but mounted infantry. Rather. Now let's, next one's going to be beast boss and beast sonata boys. These guys are just a nice good unit to have a natural dev wounds to beast boss and to have a kind of full hit reroll to monster vehicles. More elite bodies on the field the better. So we love these guys. They're a great filler. Sh they fill the shoes really well. And they're basically like boys, but better, but they obviously aren't that expensive. So great monster and vehicle hunters, but also a nice infantry um, infantry dealer if you're looking for that kind of stuff. So that's going to be all the killers, the main damage dealers in our list. But who is going to be the back pocket units? Who are the units who are going to be doing all the things in behind the scenes, but be very effective in the merch? Now, notice how I said before that we love our gold standard um, thrower units. So who are they in this list? First one's going to be Gretchen's. Gretchen's are crazy cheap at 40 points for 11 man with 2 OC and a CP generation ability. It allows you to basically be on a point and generate CP through your command phase on it. So these guys are crazy. Probably one of the best, like, really extremely cheap thrower units in the game that offers amazing abilities. So these guys are great for holding down points, but also great for just kind of being in your list and giving you that free CP generation that might even allow you to take fixed if that's where you want to go. Next one's going to be Storm Boys. Storm Boys are a nice, easy, cheap scoring unit that can come in from Deep Strike, score your investigate signals, screen your back lines, you know, just be an efficient, be an option to take for Deep Strike. Because the more options we have for things like Deep Strike and rest, 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 Strategic Reserve, the better for Orcs. Last one's going to be War Bikers. 12 inch movement, great ground control, awesome board coverage, a nice unit to throw out there in the pre game to kind of set yourself up for a nice, stable uh, points scoring. And Honestly, just great down ground coverage and probably one of the only ground coverage um, units besides Gretchen that offer um, effective um, kind of scoring for their points. So those are going to be the back pocket units, the main or uh, back pocket units that's going to allow you to score. But who, which most people want to talk about, are the shooting threats? Because honestly, I think that shooting threats do exist in orcs and they do have a potential to be effective. So who are they and who can you use? So less kind of shooting threats and more supporting fire for your main damage dealers of being like War Boss, um, Normal Smash Quick, and Beast Boss with Beast Slayers. First one's going to be Flash Kids. These guys actually probably should be put up in the killers because these guys are fantastic. I've talked about them hundreds of times before. Awesome unit to use if you don't. And ultimately, are probably like one of the best, best damage dealers in Orcs with their full hit reroll, sustain hits, um, and lethal hits with the Runt Hard, um, the Emma Runt. Honestly, incredible. Enough said about them already. Amazing. Next one's going to be Big Mech um, with Shock Attack Gun plus three Mech Guns, two being sh um, Smasher Guns and one being Bubble Mech Guns. Now, these guys are very controversial because most people, when they see them, get very flustered, they get very annoyed, and they become very, like, oh, you know, you don't need them, like, waste of points. But honestly, from my experiences and my optimization on my list, playing, like, 40 games of 10 with Orcs, I found these guys work so be well at being some kind of an anti tank, but also a nice back build screen. And not only I have to use Gretchen's, I actually use Gretchen's in an effective way at being on points, which is what I want them to be on with my Zogger Watch Snagger, and keep these guys on my back, screening my backfields, and just generally being a very effective unit to have in there. Also, suppliers, like I said, awesome cover fire for main objective, holding down one point specifically, along with my other point, who's being absolutely torn to pieces by my Gretchen, is a very effective way at having a nice. Uh, supporting fire through my main damage dealers on the field. But that's going to be how orcs fit the main kind of shoes of regular 40k. Uh, re kind of regular 40k format. Regular 40k full stop like army wide movement. So tanks, killers, and back pocket and shooting. This is kind of how orcs fill out those categories overall. But how do we play them on the tabletop? How do we actually do all this stuff? How do we effectively use the information we've just learned in a real life game? Well, I'm going to show you that on TTS right now. So I'm going to grab up TTS and show you right now what we just did. So this is TTS. This is what we're looking for, and this is how we're going to go. So I'm going to give you a live demonstration of what I've done. I have already deployed my list on here, as you can see. These are all my units, and I'm basically going to explain to you why I did what I did and kind of why I run the list that I do. 
based off that. So first, I'm actually going to start with Snicker because yes, I am a solo Snicker fan. I think that combination actually is awesome. Or not combination, but I think it's actually really cool. So Snicker is a nice infiltrator unit that really supplies a great um, infiltrator block, but also a nice scout block into um, basically an infiltrator block and a scout block uh, for things like the Infiltrator Squad in uh, Space Marines, or the, the Bikers in uh, Votan, or things that are going to be annoyingly um, Infiltrator, because um, Snickrot and Commandos are the only units that have Infiltrator, that actually work with Infiltrator, so um, in Orcs, so it's a nice counter to have them here. I put him here because obviously the 9-inch Destroy, the 9-inch Deny, he has this here, he offers a complete protection of this point, and also stops any scouting units from coming in and taking this point. So I have locked down this point. Also, I'm doing from the perspective that I went first, obviously. Um, so that's why if I was going second, I'd play a lot more defensively. But that's for another video um, if you want to see that. So this guy is only here particularly to deny the entire scout and infiltrator, which really helps with things that orcs usually can't control. So I love Snickrot. He can teleport after away and score secondaries if he needs to, but ultimately really good. This one's going to be Shock Drum Dragster. He's here because he teleports, and I t love to place my teleport units in, like, really stupid places that my enemy will never reach. So, like, they can never be shot. They're just here. Who cares? And ultimately, they're just... They're, they're, there. they're just there. So, I can teleport, score in points when I need to, or be on an objective when I have to. Now, my Mech Guns and Shock Attacker are here for one reason and one reason only, because they can fully see this point. They are here guarding this um, point here, so if we go in here, we can look at the entire screen line, so for a deep strike, they've screened this entire area, and here, they've also screened this entire area, so not by much, obviously, but that's a huge wave around my, um, around my, uh, usual, around my usual, uh, field, and it really just allows for, like, a continuous, it allows for continuous screening. I don't know, basically put that too much. And having this full um, attitude towards this point here really gives me strength into holding this and allows me, not only for my aggression unit who are going to push up here, but allows for a complete utter protection of this point. So things like infantry are going to have to deal with all the units that push up on here, but also a complete over overwatch for like an overlooking from the mech guns and shock attacker. And with a forced battle shock on this point, it can be very effective. Next one's going to be uh, flash guns. Now, I want to talk about these guys specifically, because these guys are going to be pushing up in this direction. If we see here, they're going to be moving six inches here. Now, the reason I put them here is because flash kids already having an amazing overwatch with sustained hits, and lethal hits, and a full hit reroll, are going to be the main cause of an incredible overwatch. They're one of the best overwatch in the game. So, forcing these guys here, in the six inch movement they have here, which is going to be like, what, here, for a main unit, is going to have a 24-inch radius protection of all this, because if an enemy wants to push up in here, obviously in my movement phase, I move, I save a CP, so that when I shoot, the enemy is going to have to deal with an amazing, but really, really bad, uh, flash kit overwatch, which is going to be an incredible, kind of hard duration to deal with. So, it denies this kind of point to an enemy who either wants to take a lot of damage, lose a lot of infantry units, or completely lose their squad overall if they wanted to, or risk um, or not risk moving and have this point completely clear so that my Gretchen unit are safe to move here and have that. So basically, these guys are protecting this point and a little bit of this point in terms, but overall, really, um, kind of has a whole purpose. Gazgol, like I said, as you can probably see, he's moving up here. The reason I put him kind of out of cover is because he's going to be moving into cover. If you're going first, never think about the first turn, always think about the uh, position you're going to be at the end of your movement phase. So, these guys are all going here, ready for my wild turn to be set up here, ready to go, um, so that his uh, wild aura is helping not only this, as you can see, 12 inches there, but also helping any units to go here. So, nice continuous, I really like Gazgol for that purpose, and he's going to be sitting there, ready to go for that orientation. Next is going to be Mozrog. Mozrog is moving up here, you know, he's going to be moving here. The only reason he's not going to be in cover is because I want the enemy to shoot him. I want them to direct fire onto Mozrog because he can tank the most of the shots probably, and it also sets up a nice go turn if he doesn't die to my um, point over here, which I'll charge into with a large combination of units, with Gazgol, and absolutely shred to hell. 
or he stays here, kills stuff there, or he dies here and basically uses the entire enemy shooting phase to kill him. Or he doesn't do that and uses one shot to kill him. Either way, he's done his job really well and he's helped the whole base point and also protects Snickrot from doing stuff if he wants to teleport away. Next one's going to be the truck. Now the truck is interesting because the truck, whole purpose here is to be here, move up these 12 engines, and then um, hit the disembark. So the three inch radius here, the knobs are going to be put straight on the point. Now, you could say, oh, you know, but you'll be shot here. But the whole point of Mozrog is to help this efficiency. He's here to protect the knobs. Now, when you're playing Mozrog, you want Mozrog continuously revealed because that's what keeps you in strength. It's what diverts fire away from your main targeting units, like your flash kits, your beast snagger boys, your um, Gretchens, your anything you don't want to be shot onto Mozrog. And Mozrog can tank a lot of that, so it's fine. So having Mozrog there, even if he dies, but uses the entire shooting phase to do it, is awesome. So keep keep Mozrog in mind when you're doing things like that, and always have Mozrog in a position where the enemy either has to shoot him, or he's going to be crazy damage spike to whatever he wants to take that point, because obviously you need primary to shoot him. So then we up there, deploying over there. Over here we got the weird boy with 10 boys, there in cover, obviously the only way you can shoot him is in here, which is a completely niche zone, if you see here. So people don't really want to shoot Weird Boy, and overall, it just gives me a better strength to look at. Um, it puts these guys in a position where they can just teleport whatever they want, and really help cover over the point. It's just a go turn a lot easier, and it's a thing. The Gretchen here, I put here, simply because you would say, why haven't you put them on a um, on a point? Because if you don't get them on a point, they don't get those free CP. But, um, Zogar Wars now having Scout 9 allows me to put him here. which like I said, is on the point. Put you on the point, allowing you to be there. So, I'll get the free CP because the scout move is done before any other phases in the game. So, moving in there, will allow me to get a free CP um, on a 4-up, along with the CP I already have, which will help me do things like Arda's Nails on the knobs, plus the minus one to wound you against your war boss, which allows them to stay even stronger and take more damage if they move. So, that is my entire overview of my deployment. You really have to think about your go turn. So, for example, Gazel coming in here, moving up here, is going to set up a nice go turn for them. He's going to set up a nice go turn for them because it gives them multiple hits. He's going to set up a nice go turn for Mozrog, and they're going to set up a nice go turn for Snickrock because Snickrock can teleport out and do deployments. Set up a nice go, go turn for the Weird Boys, and these guys don't really need a go turn. Their whole game is a go turn just to protect that point. So, continuously setting up an entire deployment. Oh, also, yeah, um, I have Storm Boys. They'll be obviously not uh, Storm Boys over here. They won't be in the go turn. They'll just be like, obviously, when I'm ready to score. But the point is, you should be continuously setting up a go turn for your units, allowing them to have the most beneficial of the war, so you can kill as many as possible, and surround them with as much efficiency as you need. So take your time, think in your enemy's phase. If you're going first, set up aggressively. If you're not going first, set up defensively. But defensively, where you get benefit of cover, not defensively, you're completely covered because orcs obviously need to move in a certain way. So, that can be actually, if you want to see a like, proper deployment guide for like all forms of deployment, I'm happy to make that video. But now I'm going to talk about a more competitive standpoint for Orcs. I'm going to talk about the trucks. Deploying the trucks in a defensive and a, and a um, non-defensive way. So I'm just going to quickly uh, move the truck over here and just get rid of these guys. And then copy. Oh, no, sorry, clone. And I'll have the three, four trucks as a nice angle. So. When you have trucks in the game, you have to think of two things. Number one is that it doesn't really matter if your trucks die. Don't care because it's only 65 points. If they have bring it down, different story, but I'll explain it in a minute. So, if the trucks die, it's not a big problem. So, having them in a situation like I had over here, where they move up and they come like here, for example. They come here, for example. They can be shot by the enemy, but it doesn't ultimately matter because if the truck dies, it doesn't have a big deal to go. Because... The whole point of trucks is not to be like continuously delivering units, it's to deliver them once, explode, and then do whatever they have to do. Here, you would do the same example for these guys. So over here, if you're looking for a nice point collection over here, if you're going first, you put them here, ready to go. If you're not going first, you want to protect them as much as possible. So, having a turn here will allow you to set up a decently okay go turn, but be in a defensive cover mode. They are T8, so you don't have to worry too much about like T5 guns going through. Just keep them in mind. So you have to always be thinking about things like, okay, how can I make the most value out of the position I just put it? So for example, you could put a truck here, allowing you to move up here, and kind of having a defensive road there. 
Now, obviously, you're playing aggressively. It doesn't really matter. The enemy sees you. If you're not playing aggressively, you really want to be careful and making sure you have benefit of cover. So, kind of positioning him like this or positioning him in a way that allows him to benefit of cover is what you want. Putting him like this, having an offensive cover is really what you want. So, overall, Orcs are continuously looking for the idea of um, pushing up in different manner. You could put him here, for example. If you're playing aggressively, like I said, put them on the line, have him ready to go. If you're not playing aggressively, you need to put Orcs in a position that allows them to still survive, and all the units inside the Blackbirds want to carry in the main war phase, but being a strong enough unit to do well. So, this overall might not be a bad position, because this guy obviously might, might be bad, but these three units here are going for a nice effective go. Oh, uh, we go here, he's moving up here, he's moving up here, he's moving up here. Doesn't matter if they die, keep them there. But, that's going to be my entire Orc guide to fully understanding and, under, and basically getting a full grip of Orcs. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more content like this, where I go over a full uh, kind of explanation of Orcs, leave a like, subscribe, do all the cool YouTube stuff, um, and hope to catch you in the next one. Before we go, make sure to go vote over my community poll about some interesting new topics I will talk about in the content, and all the stuff I said before applies. See you in the next one.